I've had some pretty tight schedules before, but this one was one of the toughest. One week to do an unboxing video isn't that tough, but my conscience told me it had to be not from Concentrate, which generally complicates things. Luckily, an idea popped in my head at record time, but it did involve me cheating a little. I was okay with it. Late 2015, early 2016, I designed and built a mod for my blood brother, Cory. Cory is one of the most important persons in my life, and we've had many adventures together over the years, and I wanted to do something special for him, so I gave this mod my all. It was truly unique, truly not from Concentrate. I can proudly say that it blended materials beautifully, from Zeracote hardwood to the polished aluminum to the synthetic acrylics and circuit boards. A masterpiece was born, and her name was Ariel. Now during the build, I would make multiple pieces to practice, and to have a backup in case I screwed up, which happens more often than I would like. These pieces were scattered to the four corners of my property, and like a proper quest line in an RPG, my only hope to defeat the deadline for my sponsor was to collect them and unite them to form the Octoforce of... Yeah, this is a uh, pretty cheesy even for me. All right, so I was able to round up the parts, but I was still unable to find the motherboard tray, arguably the most important piece. But after sitting down, I literally found it after two seconds and caught it on video, so. Now, as I was preparing to tear into the project, the doorbell rang and I was given another box to tear into. Inside, another box. Technically, it's a crate. Even more technically, it's the AMD Combat Crate, TM. My talking points from AMD explain that just Combat Crate was legally taken. I mean, my suggestion is Battle Box. Um, it might not be taken, it sounds pretty cool, and... Well, technically it's a box, not a crate. I mean, well, technically, 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 it's the AMD Combat Crate. You know what, just no one should listen to my marketing advice. Inside the AMD Combat Crate was a delicious new computer part smell. An MSI B350 Tomahawk AM4 motherboard. Graphics by MSI, specifically the Radeon RX 580 Armor 8GB OC Edition. Last but not least, the excellent Ryzen 5 1600. Now, the talking points that I have here lead me to point out this is only available in the USA, and it's designed to offer DIY gamers peace of mind in choosing superb performance without worry. Shouldn't it be AMD diligently prepared, not Intel diligently prepared? Get it? I know, I, I disgust even myself. I'm sorry. Now, on a serious note, I'm not sure why price isn't the key talking point. The CPU and GPU are a great choice for gaming and productivity alike, and really hard to beat for the price. Now, I've already covered the processor and GPU in my Slowpoke Ryzen build, which you can watch here. Right now, if you were to purchase these individually from Amazon, it would cost you $623.72. The MSRP for the AMD Combat Crate? $549. Shocking when you consider that not too long ago, this was less than the going rate for a 580 alone, and the 4GB version of that. Speaking of not too long ago, not too long ago a budget board belonged in a budget case with no window because they were ugly. But not so for the B350 Tomahawk, which in my opinion looks great. It also has good I.O., including a PS2 port, which is a rare treat. As a GPU, I love the 580, and this particular model from MSI is amazingly priced, but it looks like they took the cooler off a much smaller card, like their 1070. But it's actually unique if you look closer, so that just confuses me. Now the shroud design could also use more work in the looks department, but I do have an idea to tie it in with the rest of the hardware. Bottom line is that these parts are great for a budget build, and it's my job to make them all look good in the overall mod. Saving money on hardware is good, because building a second Oriole is not cheap. Oriole uses $123 of Type 315 stainless steel hardware from McMaster Car. Yeah, seriously. This doesn't even include the cost of the Heim joints, coupled with the DOM tubing and nut certs, which was another 86 bucks. Together, these four mini tie rods, the same type I use in my custom Jeep. Now, they don't steer the mod, but they do serve as pretty cool handles. Now that I had all the pieces accounted for, I need to test fit everything and add holes or threads necessary for the ATX board. This is done using my trusty tap set that I inherited from a dear friend. <sighs> uh, it smells like grandpa's garage in this drawer. One piece I still need to make was the GPU support. I borrowed a bracket from leftover ARC parts, the ARC being my very first production chassis that was available way back in 2010. 
With everything bolted together, I was able to temporarily install the motherboard and GPU so I could finish designing the support system. Here's a dance you all can do. Let me introduce to you posing. Everybody pose. Here's a dance you all can do. Let me introduce to you posing. Everybody pose. <laughs> ideas on how to tackle the next day. My second least favorite part of modding is finishing. Now I think I hate finishing so much because it happens far from your finishing point and takes forever to get there. Prep is the name of the game and I began by sanding my parts and cleaning them using dish soap to get off my previous elbow grease. After cleaning comes etching. I etch all my metal parts before painting for superior adhesion. Many rattle can paints you buy at the hardware store have etching chemicals in them already, but etching them with a dedicated etcher is it's best. It's best to do it that way. You can buy a jug of metal etcher at Home Depot for cheap, but my favorite stuff is prep and ruddy, which also coats your parts in zinc phosphate, which is awesome for steel. I'll link to it in the description. I usually grab a different primer, but I wanted to try this clean metal primer from Rust-Oleum as I thought it would have a more powerful etcher built in. And it was also white, which is good because I wanted to choose a white paint. A while back, James Earl from Lone Industries gifted me his wonderful L4 chassis, which I had been drooling over in the forums. And I shot it in this metallic pearl paint and it turned out wonderful. Mostly because of my secret weapon, automotive grade 2K clear from Spraymax. This stuff is awesome, expensive, and worth it. I hit my parts with the primer and while waiting for it to dry, I got to work on my tie rods, which had rusted over quite a bit from sitting for ages. Now I didn't want them to look perfect. I actually wanted them to have a raw industrial look. So I hit them with a hammer and also made some vice marks on them. I was initially planning on polishing these, but keeping a teeny bit of rust on them. Then I was gonna hit them with a the clear so they look like my G panels and brackets. But then another idea popped into my head. To make this work, I was gonna need to find a tub large enough to hold my longer tie rod in. I couldn't find anything readily available, so I cracked open my old drill press and used the cover to pour my motor oil in. Next, I threw one of the tie rods in the vise and hit it with some map gas for a long time. I can't believe that actually worked. A process similar to this was used back in the day to harden gun parts in a corrosion resistant layer. It's called bluing and it's really tricky to get an even finish, but I didn't want one anyway, so <laughs> I was in luck. Although my camera shots are poor here, these parts turned out fantastic. I'll try to do a better job capturing at the end of the video. It actually was quite easy, but cleanup was a pain. I did not think that through. My primered parts were still not dry, which is unusual. The etching chemical in it must have caused this, but I did not have time to wait, so I uh, used my heat gun on the parts. I was so short on time, and with me leaving out of state, I second guessed my color choice, and I decided on a single stage silver wrinkle. This is a challenging paint to get right, but if you know how to do it, it's not really that hard. The trick is to slowly build up a heavy, wet coat all at once, so the wrinkle agents can do their thing. You usually want light coats when painting with rattle cans, and you definitely do not want your paint to run, so this process is actually pretty counterintuitive. I used the normal tricks of starting the edges and then the hard to reach areas, and kept my stray can about 10 inches from the part, and I got a pretty decent result. Now after all the stress from painting, I was ready for something easy. So I sanded and shaped the Zero Cody part down and oiled it with 100% natural tongue oil. 
This part was cut from a one inch slab of wood costing over a hundred dollars. I don't have the exact number because Corey purchased it and he also planed it for me. Back to real work. This one's tricky. I needed to make a compound bin for a bracket made out of five millimeter thick acrylic. Complicating this was the extremely thin features that were so close to the bin lines. Luckily, I still had the jig that I built for this for the original Oriole. It's just a door hinge, some steel U-channel, and a fiberglass heating strip, but it works really well. There is still room for human error though. I totally botched my first attempt. Luckily, past me was a rock star and had multiple sheets cut out just for this very reason. If any of you ever travel back in time, bypass me a beer. Night was upon me and I was plumb wore out, but so much work still remained. About the only thing I had left in me was mindless polishing, so I did what little could be done the buffing wheel before hitting the pillow hard. Ugh, I awoke on day three with the unsettling realization I was going out of town at 4 a.m. the next day. I was nowhere near done with the mod, let alone shooting video and editing it. I drank some extra coffee and battled removing the protective paper from my one inch thick bulletproof glass base. It took two hours because this stuff just turns to glue after a year or so. Still hopeful, I laid out my parts to assemble. I figured I could at least get that done to show you guys, but then I saw something even more horrifying. I painted the wrong side of two of my biggest parts. I could not believe how stupid I had been and let this always be a lesson to me and to you to always mark the show side with a Sharpie or something. Now you might wonder why I simply just didn't coat both sides and I, yeah, I wish I did, but I didn't for two reasons. One, mating surfaces take a lot longer to cure. I didn't want to smudge or crack paint before they were ready. And two, there's always a show side to any part that you're painting because the last part that you want to shoot is the show side because overspray is going to hit the back no matter what you do. Professional painters are really good with their technique and can avoid doing this, but I'm not a professional painter and I'm using rattle cans, so overspray is a deal. So I hate doing this, but this video is going to need to be at least a two-parter. When I get back from my trip, I'm going to fix my mistakes, design and build a custom power supply and mounts, hook everything up, wire it, sleeve it, test it, and give you guys the results. Plus, there'll be some vinyl photography. Special thanks to Sean at AMD for sending me the AMD Battle Crate, to James from Lone Industries for sending me the Lone Industries L4, to Corey for inspiring me to build Ariel and always being there for me, but especially thank you to my Patreon supporters. You might have noticed that there's no video ads for these anymore because of you guys. I really appreciate that. And I also appreciate anybody who uses my Amazon affiliate links to buy relevant stuff that you see in these videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for part two. Bonus segment. Not really, it's an announcement. I know I promised you guys last time that this video would be for an internally liquid cooled S4 Mini. I'm still working on that, but that project has ballooned out of scope. Actually, it's ballooned into two separate minis. One that I'm helping Brian with, and another that I'm completely building from the ground up with custom everything, radiator, water blocks, everything. It's nuts and soaks up a ton of my time, money, and energy. So thank you for having patience while I work all that out. Just so I let you guys know this before you said something in the comments, which I probably deserve. Also in Before the Haters, I'm ugly, these are boring, my voice is stupid, eat a sandwich, why didn't you do it, X, Y, Z, and I hate you. Too bad for you because I love you and if you need a hug, I give them out for free. Da -da 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 -da. It's the one and only Digo Double G. Nope. Nope.